Good afternoon, Pokey Sports. Welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 10 video bringing you Kiram Ice. Now, I know you guys are thinking, Kevin, how can you be using Kiram Ice when Zacian's like the top most used restricted mon in the format? Guys, there are answers to Zacian and there are answers to Zacian on this team. So Kiram Ice is going to have some time to shine here. Let's also not forget to mention that Kiram Ice does have access to things like Earth Power, Fire Moves, which is a great offensive typing in this game. And also ice moves like freeze dry, which is a, incredible against rain teams. Like I think honestly, Kiram Ice, um, it's not the top tier restricted, right? It's not like the Pokemon you find on every single team, but you can definitely build around it. You could definitely find a niche for it. And I think this team does a very good job of doing that. Speaking of the team, we have the Volcarona here. This is your answerization. This is the easiest answerization. This is the best answerization. You got fire, you got redirection, you got everything you need. You have flame body to stop to you know get a potential burn on on some physical attackers it's a really great pokemon followed by the regilecki for the speed control regilecki this might this might as well be called like regilecki sports because <laughs> um i know you guys make a meme that in in the on every team but regilecki has been on a lot of the teams in the last couple of videos and guys it's a good mon well I, I mean i'm sure someone at Grain freak when they designed this pokemon was like hmm i wonder if making something 200 base speed is going to be fun they did it anyway have a stack attack here making a little bit of a return from the last team simply because stacka can help you in certain scenarios that you want to really control the speed speed control is crucial in vgc and is crucial in series 10 because things one shot things they do they're meant to one shot things so you have to put yourself into a good speed control whether it be trick room or whether it be tailwind you have to have some way of controlling it i find that trick room is more um is often better is, is often the better speed control simply because you get to control uh what whether you go first or not tailwind only makes it so that you can go first but if your opponent goes for the, their own tailwind they just matched it or if they go for trick room they flipped it so trick room kind of gives you that better option i feel like in my opinion and then we have the nine tails here for aurora veil nice beautiful low on nine tails with the light clay for the Aurora Veil, you know, we don't have Lapras, Gigantamax in the meta, so the Ninetales is our next best option. It's our best option, to be entirely honest. So hopefully, because of the Aurora Veil, we're going to be living some pretty strong, super effective moves and maybe not getting one shot too often. And then finally, for the last Pokemon, we have the Focus Sash, Watershifu. I have nothing but respect for Watershifu ever since the last team, so I think it deserves another spot here on the channel. If you guys are excited for this team, you know what to do. Hit the like button down below and subscribe to Focus Sports if you haven't done so already. And let's get on to these battles. Starting off the day against a Palkia team. Now, this is actually not that bad because we do have Freeze Dry on our Kyurem. So that's kind of like a secret tech for us. And they're kind of running a pretty standard team except for this Zapdos. This Galarian Zapdos. I didn't expect to see that one on the team. So it's kind of uh, throwing me in for a loop here. Gonna run double terrain on his side of the field as well with the Incineroar Intimidates. Well, to be entirely honest, I think Kyurem Ninetales is a pretty fine lead for us. They do have Fake Out Pressure, which is a little bit annoying. But we have Protect. It, it, fake Out doesn't mean anything if we just Protect. Now for the rest of the team, I think I... I th see, the Urshifu's kind of a toss-up. I want to bring Urshifu... But at the same time, they have a Palkia. So it's like, uh, my water type moves are not going to be doing anything. But I do have priority on this set. So let's just do the Urshifu in the back and have a Regilecki in the back as well. We're going to leave behind our stack. We're going to leave behind our Regi our um, Volcarona. One, because there's not much Volcarona wants to do against the Palkia. And... Okay, it always scares me a little bit. Also, I've been... Guys, this is like a secret. A secret. Don't tell anyone. I've been working on my Isle of Armor and my Crown Tundra Pokedex so that I'm not the biggest loser every single time uh, a trainer card comes out. Okay. This is interesting. And they want a Trick Room. Question is, do they read? <laughs> see, see, here's the thing. It's either they want to fake out the Moonblast or they want to fake out the Freeze Dry. Freeze Dry is four times effective stab. You know, it, it, it's got it all. I think what I want to do is I'm going to attempt to freeze dry, hoping that they don't expect me to have it just because not everybody really goes against Kyurem every day. Um, so I'm going to freeze dry and I think I'm going to roar veil here just in case they do set up trick room. I want to try to get as tanky as I possibly can so I can deal with it in my own way. There's a fake out. Please be on nine tail. 
They don't expect the freeze dry. Now freeze dry. Show me what you got. Come on. Restricted gone. That's how you start an episode, folks. That's how you start an episode. Okay. That honestly could not have gone any better for us. Because I'm pretty sure a trick room was their option there. Uh, it was probably their play, too. I know Kiram should naturally outspeed a Palkia, but you know. Yeah, Trick Room was definitely their play if they're gonna whip out a stack of here. But here's the thing. I also have this button. So what stopped me from just clicking that button and going for the Aurora Veil again? We're gonna set up the Aurora Veil here. We're gonna get ourselves nice and tanky for eight turns, which is an eternity in VGC. And here's an Earth Power right into the stack's face. Is this another Oko? Kyurum is not playing around, man. Here's the Flare Blitz coming in from the Incineroar. Onto the Ninetales. We'll still knock on my Ninetales even through the Aurora Veil and all. Ninetales is not too tanky, guys. I, I don't know if you guys knew that, but Ninetales is not too tanky. We can end this battle right here by just taking this Pokemon out and showing it to my opponent. Because this is just an insta-kill on the Incin. And then my opponent really only has one more Pokemon in the back. Sending out the Thunderstruck, it's gonna be the Zapdos. Zapdos is a little spooky for us, but I feel like a Freeze Dry should still do its job. And I honestly think just a Surging Strikes on Incin won the battle. They're gonna hang on there, they're gonna detect. Okay. So nothing happens here except Incin going down. This is as commanding as a victory can be here. It's not what you expect to see from the first battle with Akiram. They do have the berry. Will that make a difference? I I think that was the first hit still. No, it won't make a difference. Yes, the one more. Okay, cool. It's the world versus the, versus the Zapdos right now. Zapdos can probably pick off a KO on my Kiram. Now, if they made the swap into that Zapdos one, I went for Earth Power. That would have messed me up for a turn, to be honest. But regardless, let's just go for the straight attacks here. Nothing too fancy. Battle was canceled. Respect to my opponent for hanging in as long as he did. I mean, just after that freeze dry, that's just such such a heartbreak. At least for me, uh, it would have been. I was like, okay, next one. <laughs> but GG's Kiram making, making a statement today. Oh, no. Is this how we're immediately punished after, after taking such a commanding game? We're going against Shuckle, Chansey, Dialga. Alolan Persian and DD hit him on top. They have no damage. They, the, the point of this battle for them is not to do damage. Okay. Thankfully, they do have a lot of fighting type weaknesses. So Urshifu is going to be key to winning this battle, I believe. But at the same time, I don't want to lead with Urshifu because then I get intimidated by the hit him on top. Here's what I do, I think. I'm going to lead Ninetales. I'm going to lead Kurum. I'm going to lead Urshi. I'm going to lead Staka. Regilucky does nothing for us here. Volcarona kind of does nothing for us as well. I feel like having more physical attackers is more beneficial to the victory than anything else. So let's try that, man. I mean, but going against a Chansey and going against a Shuckle always spells for a headache. It's not even that it's good. It's that it's annoying. And I got to somehow find a way to make this an entertaining video. Going against a Chansey and a Shuckle minimizing and guard swapping and doing all the nonsense. Anyway, what's the lead? Oh, not what I expected, to be honest. Persian lead. Interesting. This is definitely probably going to be like a fake out trick room if I had to guess. And if it is, so be it, right? I'm not too worried. I'm not worried at all. Okay. So I think here what I want to do is I want a blizzard. Also, I just realized this should be fl a fusion flare, <laughs> not ancient power. That'll be fixed in the rental code. It'll be fixed in the rental code, I swear. All right, let's go for the earth power there. Thankfully, we, it doesn't look like we even needed this battle, but. And they're going to fake up the nine tails. And it looks like potentially, maybe. That's good damage. I'm not complaining. You weakness policy? Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? All right, weakness policy to Alga. That's their damage, I guess. 
Now, who do they decide to... They just trick room. Here's the issue. They can choose one Pokemon to KO next turn. I don't know which they choose. I mean, considering the fact that they, they just did that to Ninetales. I'm just going to Blizzard, I think. I don't... Honestly, I'm doubling down. I kind of want them to KO something. Is that weird? Is that a weird thing to say? The reason why I want them to KO something is because I have a stack in the back, which can only help me. They're going to hard swap the Persian into something. Probably their Chansey. There it is. Steel Beam. Big yikes. Okay, bye, Ninetales. It wasn't meant to be. They're going to actually end up KOing themselves there. Interesting tech. Um, I got a potential freeze here, maybe. That'd be great. Nah, it's not going to be enough. Okay, I have options, though. I think my first option is going to Staka, though. I know Urshi's here, and Urshi's well and good. Actually, Urshi is the best play, right? Even if they minimize, I still have a better chance of just combating it. Yeah, because they're going to go into Shuckle, right? They're going to go into Shuckle, and they're going to start their nonsense. Shuckle's going to outspeed everything I got anyway. So I think what I do is just close combat the Chansey right now. While I can. And then, uh, this is actually a time where I would have preferred to have Fusion Flare, but it's fine. Um... I guess I just try to freeze. I'm not going to attack the Chansey here because maybe I should. Just throw literally everything I have in the Chansey. Let's not play games. Let's uh, try our best here. Yeah, because they're going to guard split. It, it means that the Shuckle is virtually useless and they're going to minimize once. That's a negative two evasion or plus two evasion. Can we break through it? We break through with the freeze dry. So far, so good. The important one is the close combat, though. Come on, baby. Yes! That did nothing still. Oh my goodness. Never mind. I think I lost. <laughs> just seeing how little that did just ruined my my whole my whole day. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. Okay, well, I guess I switched the surging strikes on. I I, I think I, I have to do all my friends are dead at this point. Does that have a chance to freeze? I believe it does. Does have a chance to freeze. That, I think that's my win con right now. <laughs> my win con is a 10% freeze chance. They're going to toxic me. I guess that's like the only thing they can do at this point. And they're going to heal all that back. This is why I got to leave Chansey on the field by itself at this point. There's like very little I can do to the Chansey to knock it out. Especially after seeing how little that... uh. That's still very good damage. Nice crit. Thanks. Yes! Life's a simulation. We did it. We froze it. <laughs> That's so good. This should knock out easily. Okay. Now I need this Chansey to stay frozen literally forever. It can't fall for the rest of the game. And I'm already playing with the plus two evasion. On top of it. Look at Ninetales still putting some work from the dead with these buffeted hail strikes. Okay, what do we got? That We got the Persian in the back. Persian's going to want to fake something out. It did that first turn. It's probably going to aim for my Ursh, if I had to guess. So let's protect with the Ursh. And let's just go for a freeze drawn to the Persian. Do some damage to it. Like I said, I'm, I'm aiming for all my friends are dead with this Chansey. Nice predicted fake out. Beautiful. Chansey, yes. Stay frozen. Sometimes when you got to play against garbage, you also bring your garbage, man. And you don't feel bad for it. Look at that freeze-dry damage. More than enough to knock out. It, oh, the hail stops. I was hoping the hail would be able to finish that off for me. But it's unfortunate that it can't. I think Trick Room's up soon, too. 
Twisted Dimensions do return to normal there. Um, I'm actually going to Aqua Jet because I know Persian outspeeds my whole team. And I'm just going to start going for the special defense drops on these, on this, uh, Chansey for now. Eliminate the Persian. Chansey is now left by itself frozen. We're going to miss. It's fine. Because they're still frozen. We're eventually going to die to poison with the Kiram, but I think it's pointless to switch out right now. Like, I might as well just try to get attacks in. Actually, since they raised their defense. Oh, well, they have no defense boost. They just raised the actual physical stat, right? Yeah, it's just the physical stat. So, close combat is still my best play because it's super effective. And I guess I go for freeze dry. Just think it doesn't actually matter. It's my stab. It's my highest damage output. If I get a special defense drop, it doesn't matter. Or she was going to miss. We're going to connect with the freeze dry. This is still some damage, man. I literally can't complain about any damage that I do anymore. Still frozen. <laughs> this is great. Okay, Kirim. Sayonara. Now, I, I bring in my stack, I think. Not, not I think. I, I will. I have to. And is this... See, Rockside misses, but I think Chansey is already slow. How slow is Chansey, man? I believe uh, if I Gyro Ball, it's not going to be enough. I got to try to... If you guys are... I know this seems like a simple turn, but it's not, right? Because I got to make sure I make the best decisions possible. Or else I could still lose to Chansey just healing itself. Chansey is base 50, 50 speed. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's not the slowest. I think a, an ac I think an accurate gyro ball would be better, or a more accurate gyro ball would be better than an inaccurate rock slide. We are never connecting with these close combats. Come on, man. They're still frozen, though. All right. Can we connect with the gyro ball? <laughs> okay. Let's keep it up, friends. Let's keep it up. Come on. As long as Chansey remains frozen, we connect with the CC, we end the game. Good. Get me out. We crit the CC even better. <laughs> Who needs surging strikes? We're out here critting with close combats. All right. Before this next battle, let me go stick uh, Flash Flare, Fusion Flare on, on my Kira. All right. We got Fusion Flare back this time. Um, going against Nay Very, very standard scary team. Um... But, thankfully, I do think we have the answers to it. We're definitely going to have to bring Volcarona this time around. The Milotic doesn't scare us at all because we simply don't have anything that needs to worry about it. Um, don't know if we need stack or not. But I think for the beginning of the game, a Curum Volk is nice here. I feel like it gives us options. Having the Urshifu in the back is also very nice. And I'm leaning towards Reggie Lucky just so I have something to outspeed the Zacian just in case he needs some, like, you know, last minute damage on it. But at the same time, I'm a little cautious because they do have Landris. But whatever. Let's go ahead and click the, the done button. Let's get this last battle underway. And before this last battle gets started, I forgot to plug this at the beginning, but we have a TikTok. Go follow us on TikTok. If you guys have TikToks, you get to see me eating Oreos and Mike winning in Unite in some VGC battles. Like, look, there's a there's a spatial Ren Palkia video right here, and there's me eating an Oreo. And then there's Mike playing Unite and spamming Venusaur because Venusaur is broken. It's a fun time. Check it out. We're trying to push that a little bit, so that'd be great. And also, if you haven't already checked out Pokesports.org and you made it this far in the video, you'll probably enjoy some of the stuff you see there. Anyway, opponent, NayJ. What you got for me? What's in the lead? What's so spooky? That you're hiding on this team. It's probably just the standard basic team. Like, I shouldn't honestly be expecting to see anything wild and out of the ordinary. Regilucky, my Lodic lead. Honestly, whatever. I got a Volcarona and a Kyurem. Question is, do I want to freeze dry and redirect? I think, I think so. I think I freeze dry you. Might even freeze dry protect. Like, what, what does Regilucky want to do? It could be Electro Web Muddy Water, which is why I'm kind of leaning towards not going for a move. So I'll just protect with Volk. I, I want to preserve the Volk more than anything because of the Zacian. 
Which is definitely in the back if they led with like one non-offensive mon and one offensive mon that's just gonna Volt Switch on me. Reggie Lucky Rain Dance. Hold on. Secret tech. Not a secret tech, but different tech. I, I'm feeling very happy for... Uh... Interesting. Were they expecting me to bring the Ninetales in the lead? Probably. That's good damage on my Lodic. Not complaining about that at all. As they go for the Scald, not gonna happen today, folks. All right. Not even worried. Not even fearful. I feel a-okay. Let's go for... My Lodic's gonna protect. Let's freeze draw on the Alecky spot. Um... I'm a little bit reluctant. Yeah, I'll bring my own Earth. I'm a little bit re reluctant to go for the Earth Power on the Regilecki. For the simple reason that they could have Landorus in the back, even though I don't see why they would bring Landorus against this team. As they go for the Electro Web, that's kind of that's gonna kind of suck, not going to lie, for the Urshi. We do hang on there because the Sash... I mean, we would have hang, hung on even through it all. I'm a little bit scared because my Lodic didn't protect there. We are able to just bring the the Alecky to Sash, though. Okay, very interesting turn one, to be honest. They are, like, super afraid of that spot. I might have just thrown away an Urshifu for no reason. I think I threw away an Urshifu for no reason. But, I mean, at the end, I, I don't think I can, I can afford to sack off the Volcarona yet. Until that... So that Zacian shows itself. I can't sack Volko. I can't. Regardless, we do have a max speed of Lucky on the field. I think this is going to be a simple turn of just me freeze drying anything that can. Oh, actually, let's, let's try to make it a little bit more fascinating. I'm going to Earth Power the Milotic spot. So I should still take out of that range. And I'll just go for Electro Web just so I can hit both here. Let's hope we win a speed tie. We're max speed lucky. We can't get any faster. So if they're also max speed, this is a speed tie. Otherwise, we're lucky. I know a lot of people are actually very against max speed lucky, but this is the, this is why you run it. Because if you don't run it, things like this can happen. We just got a double KO. That's really, really relevant. Because now we can play with the speed a little bit when it comes to that Zacian. The issue is we're already at negative one. Kirim didn't get to attack. It's fine. <laughs> Poor Kirim. It's like, oh, never mind. You guys don't need me. Incense coming on the field. Interesting. All by Zacian, right? Yeah. Not going to lie, a little spooked. Just a bit. As I should be, right? This is not a... This is a pretty scary sight, if we're going to be entirely honest. I think I got some plays in me, though. Play number one is going to be... No, that's that's too much of a play. Play number one is going to be... Try to get them to... No, because I have to double protect. Play number one to double protect because of the instant, right? Play number two. Oh, then they just set up the sub. I'm I'm falling right into I'm playing right into their hands, but I don't really have another option. They could just set up sub right there. There's a the fake out. It was gonna be on the lucky, so regardless of what I do, I was gonna be sad. They set up Zorn's dance. Yo. My opponent is meaning some business right now. I'm going to hard swap out into Folk because I don't think I have another option. Followed by... Followed by just a hard Electro Web to try to play with their speed a little bit. This is not a plus threeization, folks. Swords Dance is very spooky. I could have probably taken a turn to attack there, but if they went for the Behemoth Blade, I would have just instantly lost. I feel like the... I feel like the... The pros outweigh the cons in terms of double protecting. So I can't predict the future. This is going to be a behemoth blade. Probably onto that Kiram spot if I had to guess. It, that's fine. That's kind of what I wanted. It's going to pop my citrus and maybe get a burn? Please? <laughs> I'm like in desperate need of a burn. I can only live one more of those, by the way. 
Oh, by the throat chop on the Alecky. I should take one. And Rain is going to stop. Oh, boy. Um... I'm going to Rage Fire this, and I'm going to Electro Love again. Yep, I'm going to keep Electro Loving. I want to put the Zacian in a spot to where... Dang it. Well, the Rage Powder should help me there, unless this is a uh, Safety Goggles Ensign. We'll learn right now. Please be citrus. Please be citrus. Please be citrus. Yes. Okay, good. It's not safety goggles, so it's going to get redirected into the Volk. Probably a Flare Blitz, right? Harding shot. Okay, well. Volk's not doing damage. I'm not. Volk is not in the game to do damage right now. Volk is in the game to redirect every single attack into itself. And I'm just going to keep electrolabbing. Speed is key. So once my Kirim's on the, on the field... I think I need the Zacian at negative two. I'm pretty sure my Kirim is a fast Kirim, though. I made these sets so long ago, guys. You guys don't know, I, I, I built a lot of my teams, like, super in advance. So sometimes I forget the sets on them. <laughs> okay. The negative two Zacian. This Kirim is... Max Speed Timid. So that means I go up to 161. Zacian's gonna go for the Behemoth Blade. If they get burnt, this is the best case scenario. Give it to me. Give me the burn. I don't get the burn. They do get the throw chop. Okay, so we got a Kirim left. Can a negative two Zation... Can a Kirim outspeed a negative two Zation is the question. How many Incineroar Flare Blitz can I take is another question, right? Because I got options here. My options are attack the Zacian or attack the Ensign. So I predict the Zacian to protect. And attack the Ensign. Or do I just... I'm just going to protect just in case Zacian protects. I forgot I have to protect myself. Why even take that gamble, right? So if Zacian protects here, we know that we outspeed. We outspeed. Woo! Yes! This is what we needed. This is exactly what we needed. All that speed is coming back. Fusion Flare is highest damage output. Yes, it is. Right onto the Zacian. It's time to light a Zacian on fire. Now, worst scenario, they get the double. If they get the double, I'm a little sad. Um, man, we played to our win condition. Zacian matchups. I know in the beginning of the video, I made it seem like Zacian wasn't a bad matchup for this team. It's still a bad matchup. I'm running two ice types, for crying out loud. Um... But you can play around it. And this is the way that I was talking about. My opponent is going big, big brain here. I don't... I, I think they're realizing that they don't outspeed me anymore. They go for the double. They don't get it. Huge. Fusion Flare into the Zacian. Should be more than enough to clean this thing off the field. Beautiful. That's a cure I'm taking care of a Zacian, folks. I, I made a very good decision switching to Fusion Flare before this battle, let me tell you. Now, what does Ensign do? Ensign's going to start firing off some parting shots. Okay, so essentially what that parting shot did was eliminate my life orb damage. That's fine, right? I think at this point of the game, with Ensign's berry popped, firing off Earth Power should be more than enough to knock it out. I don't know if one is enough to knock it out, but I think two would be. So this is a very tanky Zacian. But remember, we did pop the Citrus, so that HP is all that HP is all the HP that Incineroar is gonna have. There's no healing magical item that can pop from the Nether and give this Incineroar more HP right now. Is my opponent also trying to play the timer. I feel like it's way too late to play the timer. Like, game's gonna end this turn if not next. Timer's pointless right now. Here's an Earth Power onto the Incin. Is almost enough to knock it out. But if they flare blitz, they knock themselves out. Easy. Nice. GG's. Whew, wow, that wait, why was that so close? <laughs> Big yikes. Okay, the, the, the difference in this battle was 12 HP, by the way. GG's, Nay
Yikes. Anyway, let's get you guys that rental code. And this is the rental code for the Kurum Ice team. If you guys did enjoy this team as much as I did, you know what to do. Hit the like button down below and grab this rental code while it's out. I say this every episode, but this is out for a limited time only. I just had to delete the, uh, the Palkia team just to make space for this one. So this is why I say hurry up and grab these teams while they're out because they won't be out forever. Anyway, there's not much to say about this team ex except the fact that they they performed exactly as I intended. Even without Fusion Flare, the Kurum still was able to do everything I needed it to do. And then once we added Fusion Flare, we took care of those Asians like like cake. Um, Nine Tails is great. We didn't get to see too much Nine Tails today. Hopefully, we get, we get to see it some more in the in the next uh, next couple of battles. Remember, we have two more days with this team before we decide to go ahead and move on to another team. We also didn't get to see much of Stacka today, but Stacka. It's Stacka Stacka. You guys have seen Stacka so much on this channel already. You guys don't know why Stacka is good. That I don't know how to help you. <laughs> Volcarona came in clutch. Kazation. Urshifu didn't do much. But hey, it hit, a, it hit the close combat and it, clipped the, uh, it crit the close combat on the, on the Chansey. So that's all we really needed it to do. So GG's to every opponent I had today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't liked the video, you know what to do. Hit the like button and subscribe. And share with your friends. Tell a friend about Pokesports. We got about 50 of you that don't even subscribe. Go find a friend that's going to subscribe if you're not going to do it. Anyway, <laughs> I'll get this Pokesports a great night. Peace out.